What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to do custom SwiftUI view transitions. This is something I've been using a lot personally lately, and I think it's pretty simple yet pretty awesome. We'll learn how to do it. Start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe, let's open up Xcode and start by creating a new project. We're going to stick with the iOS app templates and let's call it the Swift UI transitions. You can go ahead and make sure it's Swift UI. Swift is your language. Stick it wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop here and let's jump straight away into things. So the first thing we're going to want to do here that I'm going to at least want to do is change our preview device to a 13 Pro. Go ahead and hit resume and let's wait for our preview here. Now the premise of a custom transition is hinged off of the modifier of a matched geometry effect. And let's actually uh, first stub out what we want to kind of transition from and to. So we're gonna add a Z stack here. And inside of our Z stack, we essentially want uh, two states. One is going to be the from state and the to state. Now, when we tap on our Z stack, we're gonna set a state uh, to either true or false, and that's going to basically trigger our animation. So on this Z stack itself, we're going to say on tap gesture, we're simply going to say with an animation, go ahead and set our tapped state uh, to the inverse. So just go ahead and toggle it. And inside of here, we can say if this is false, in other words, we're in our from state, we're going to show something. Otherwise, we're going to show something else. Now, what are we gonna actually be transitioning from? So to keep it simple, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the views, but it's gonna be basically a card, a floating card with maybe some text on it. And we're gonna transition into a full screen uh, detail view of that card. So let's go ahead and create it. It's going to be nothing more than a V stack with a couple uh, text labels in it. So we're gonna give this a leading. We're gonna ignore the spacing here. And in our content, we're gonna stick three labels in here. So we're going to say title will be Swift UI. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste this and we'll change this up. And let's see what else do we want on here. We're going to want a color on here and we're going to want some font styling on these as well just to spice things up a little bit. So let's make it a title. I'm going to make it perhaps bold and let's go ahead and give all these a little bit of padding as well. Boom. Boom, and there's our second one. Boom, let's go ahead and make this title two. And maybe this guy will be footnotes, make this medium, make this regular. So we have our uh, we have our little V stack on the right going on over there. Let's go ahead and give it a background color so we can actually see it. Maybe I'll do color dot blue. And this should be blue. We can actually drop the color prefix. So there we have a card and it's starting to look kind of decent. So let's go ahead and uh, drop the padding on this to be two. So it's a little closer and we're going to style things up just a little bit. So uh, let's see. So this is a spacing actually between everything. So we're going to want everything to be left aligned, which I believe it is. Um, let's actually give this a frame. I'm going to give it a width 200 and we're going to stick an alignment in here of leading as well. And maybe let's actually do color. We're gonna do system blue just like that. All right, there's a card. We're not gonna go too crazy with it. Let's go ahead and basically talk about transitioning to the full screen state. Uh, before I do, let me just go ahead and also stick a corner radius on here. And we're also gonna stick a shadow on here just to make the card actually look like a floating card. Color will be color, secondary, label just like that. So we're going to stick a radius of maybe, I don't know, 12, X will be zero and Y, I guess we can do, I don't know, five perhaps. And now we're going to copy this whole thing and this blue color is bothering me. So we are going to change it and we're going to make it to be maybe a system pink. We're going to copy this whole card. And in essence, we're going to set up the, the view in which we want to transition to when tapped is true. So the easiest thing to do is just copy and paste it. And we're going to set this guy to be true so we can see the other state. Let's go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side, make sure our preview is up to date. And in this case, what we want to do is we just want to expand this to be, um, you know, vertically filling the screen as well as horizontally as much as possible. So let's do a couple things here. The first thing we're going to do is let's actually add a spacer inside of this, which will 
it elongates our vertical stack all the way up just like that. We're also going to want to make this perhaps a little bit wider. So we'll go ahead and make this 400. Now, obviously, you don't want to hard code these numbers when you're actually building an app. Make it adapt to the width of the device. And let's actually make that maybe like 350. And let's see, what else do we want to do? We can probably drop the shadow or we can keep it a little subjective at that point. But let's talk about the transition and let me actually also change the text in here so we can see something a little more meaningful. So we'll make the subtitle text here a video about custom transitions and we'll make the description here. Today we will learn how to leverage matched geometry effects. And one thing that's important, obviously, is make sure your text in both the top of view and the bottom view are the same, since that's kind of what we're transitioning. And if the text is different, it's going to look very much so off. So here we get into the inner workings of Matched Geometry Reader. Now, before we go ahead and actually apply it, if you go ahead and give this a run, either in a simulator or your live preview, I'm going to do the simulator since it's a tad bit more reliable. What you're going to notice is right now, there actually is an animation already when you tap on the card and go to the full screen. And the reason that there is an animation is because, let's actually make this false again, uh, is because down here, when we do toggle on the state, we're saying do it with an animation. So what SwiftUI will do, it'll use the default one that it basically defers to, which is a fade. It's going to fade from this state to this state. Now, that works well and all, but it's kind of ugly, right? Like, it, it kind of just fades. And we want it to really um, transition nicely such that maybe it expands. Uh, well, it should expand, right? Like, we want an actual transition, not, not just this janky fade. And the way we achieve that transition is by using the matched geometry uh, reader with a namespace. So first we want a namespace where all of our actual animations are going to be occurring. So it's going to be at namespace var namespace, like so. And we want to add a namespace to each of the elements whose geometry we want to match, rather transition from one state to the other. So we're going to add one for all three labels as, as well as a card itself. So here we're going to say add a match geometry effect with an ID and uh, a namespace. So the first one here, I'm just going to call this title. This is going to be nothing more than namespace, just like that. Whoops, that's not what we want. We want namespace, this guy here. And we can actually go ahead and copy and paste this. Now, one thing that's important is make sure you change these between uh, the various elements, since this is the thing that SwiftUI looks at to associate the before state and after states of these elements. Now, we can get away with, I believe, copy and pasting since the texts aren't actually changing. And the other thing we want to animate is the actual frame changing as well, right? So we're going to go ahead and add one to this V stack as well. And let's go ahead and add the same thing here. So matched geometry effect. It's going to be called the card. And we're going to say it's again within our namespace. And let's also go ahead and change this up just a tad bit. We're going to make this perhaps red. And maybe this will start off as system purple, just like that. And once again, just copy and paste this. Make sure that the ID matches the pretty important part. And let's see if the live preview actually can do its job today. We're going to go ahead and hit that. We're going to hit the live preview. And I'm going to tap it, and boom, it actually does. Now, the reason it's not as fluid looking is because you're changing colors. So if we actually make the color the same in both and run it in the simulator, it's going to look even more fluid. So I'm going to stick with this purple here. We'll copy and paste that there. Go ahead and give this a run in your simulator. And I'm going to slow down the simulator animations by going to debug, slow animations. And if you tap on it, you'll notice that it's actually expanding uh, and it's moving more or less our, our label views instead of just fading. So go ahead and hit that again and it's going to transition back to the card and you'll see the actual uh, expand or collapse in that case of the card element itself. Now a couple really interesting effects you can achieve with this, you can imagine, let's say you have something like 
a Instagram profile. And in today's Instagram's app version, when you tap on a photo on a profile, it kind of zooms it in and it transitions to the detail view where you can see the comments, the likes, you know, the, the caption, et cetera, et cetera. You can achieve that with this while also separating out your views. Now, in this case, we didn't refactor anything to put them into separate views, but the things that you would need to, you know, maintain across two views that are sharing a transition animation is a namespace and a state, otherwise known as a binding, when you wanna pass it down. I plan on doing a bunch of more videos related to this since some of the effects you can achieve with this are pretty mind-blowing with how simple the code is. I'm a major fan, and uh, that's kind of all I got for you guys today. So a couple key callouts. Make sure you aren't trying to reuse this matched geometry effect modifier ID on all your things. Otherwise, it doesn't work. In other words, when I first started, when I first came across this modifier, I thought I could get away with putting this here and here and here and here, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason it doesn't work is pretty, I, I think, intuitive once you understand is SwiftUI uses the ID to figure out from what to what to transition. And if you're matching all of them across your labels, your card, and all the other elements, it doesn't quite work properly, right? A little bit of reading figured that uh, out for me, but pretty important call out since uh, I definitely made that mistake myself. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Custom transitions for Swift UI views. Let me know in the comments down below what else you guys want to see. I've been playing with the Swift UI canvas a lot lately as well. So video coming up for that. Like the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.